Hi, I'm Debbie from Simply Special Crafts. Today we're going to take a look at the Hunky Dory First Signs of Spring Deco Large Kit. Uh, this kit from Hunky Dory is called Deco Large because the images are a little bit larger than some, and the Deco Large, as you may be aware, are the ones that you layer up with home squares between them. Uh, Hunky Dory estimates that this kit will give you uh, 24 finished cards. They have two each of 12 patterns in the kit. I'm going to show you today how to get 48 cards from that same kit. Easter was quickly approaching and I wanted you to have time to work on this kit. So I kind of put my other kits away. And when I got called out of town the last minute here recently, I grabbed this kit on the way out the door. The only supplies I took with me for the creation of this kit were this luxury set, my long blade and detail scissors, my easy tear or also known as finger lift tape. I took several packages of foam squares. I happen to have grabbed these. These are five by five by one and a half millimeter squares. If you want your three dimensional work to be lower, use one millimeter. If you want it to be a little bit more pronounced, you can use two millimeter. I use the one right in the middle, 1.5s. And I took with me a variety of sizes of cards and envelopes. That's it. Let's take a look at what we came up with. Now, as you know, the luxury kits include a number of different topper sets. And as I've already said, in the, in the luxury kit, you get two each of 12 designs. That means that you get two each of the background card. This happens to be those wonderful little lambs and the daffodils, isn't that great? You get two of these half sheet um, base. These are called the base pieces. And each base piece comes with a greeting and a couple of borders. And then you get two each of these layering sheets. Now before we go any further, I think I'm going to go ahead and show you how I made my decisions about how to layer things up. Now, as you'll notice with this particular kit, the pieces are fairly good size. And because they were fairly good size, sometimes, as you know, with a deck of large kit, I might make three cards out of a set. You might be able to do that, but in this particular case, I chose to make two. So let's take a look at how I might layer that up. Okay, so I already have two really nice base pieces to work from. I have this one and I have the one that's on the cardstock. Now not all of the cardstock pieces have an, a full image like this one does, but in this case I would use this as one of my base pieces. Now this could be, this piece here could be a third base piece if I wanted to try and make three cards. But as I've indicated, because the flowers tend to be in fairly big pieces, I'm going to just make two. So I'm going to just start matching my pieces with each of the sets, working from the largest piece to the smallest piece. So since I gave that one a large one, I'm going to give the next largest flower to the other one. I'll punch this out. And I'll give that piece here. The next largest flower is this one, so I'm going to give it here. The next largest flower is this one, so I'll put it with that one. I have a couple double flowers here, so I'll put that with that one. I have my next largest piece is this one, so just working from largest to smallest. I just assign the pieces to the different sets. Now this one was fairly easy. Sometimes if it's a more involved pattern, I will try and kind of distribute the pieces so that both the images will kind of look balanced. But as you can see, in addition to the basic pieces, I have the have a lovely day just for you, happy birthday, and Easter wishes. So even though this is definitely a springtime image, and we had that sending lots of love.
and best wishes also. Even though it's definitely a springtime image, you have lots of choices of greetings for these. Once I've done that, I'm just going to take my foam tape and start layering up my images. I like these little foam squares. Some of you have told me you prefer the tape because you don't like pulling off all the little tabs. Whatever you want to do is great. Foam squares, foam tape, you just need something for dimension. So I would just go about placing my foam squares on the back. You don't need 50 million foam squares. You just need to kind of hold it up and keep it steady. So this is about the number of foam squares I would typically use on a piece right here. Then of course I would peel those and I would go ahead and position it on my on my artwork. Then I'll go to my next largest piece. I'll put my foam squares on. on the bottom there. Am I in camera, honey? Yeah. Okay. Bryce is her cameraman, my honey. And of course these wouldn't be wiggling about because they would be attached if I were taking the time to pull off the little squares. And then I'm just going to go through and one by one I'm going to attach each of my images working from the smallest to the largest till I have a nicely layered image here. So you can see how we're doing that. Let's take a look at our finished cards. Now, as I said, I was called out of town and I just grabbed this kit on the way out the door. You won't, unlike many of our videos where I'm using a lot of supplemental materials, you will not find one card in this set where I've used anything that was not included in the luxury set. So this is a great kit to consider um, if you're going to be laid up and you need to, you're looking for a project to do, it's a really easy one to do. Um, I did all my sorting, most of my sorting in the car, most of my sorting, sorting and um, actually layering my images I did in the car. And then I just sat down and started um, taking my finished images and putting them on my card blanks. Here's the two I ended up with. And you'll see, in this case, I opted not to do an Easter card out of these. I have one that's Have a Lovely Day. It could certainly be an Easter card, but it's not specific to Easter. And I have a second one that's Happy Birthday. I've used my little image off the corner, just like what we were just building to make this small A2 card. This one's on four and a quarter by five and a half. This one is on a US A6 card which is five by six and a half inches. I haven't used extra mirror board. I haven't used any extra supplies, just what was included in the kit and my foam squares. But aren't those beautiful? Now, start thinking about this one as potentially something to work with with the kids. Um, this is a very easily completed kit and you'll get great results. So working with younger persons or older persons that um, might find it confusing to work with a lot of different materials, this is a perfect kit for that. It's very, very reasonably priced given the fact that we'll get 48 cards out of what luxury kit and the only things literally the only things we're adding is our blank cards and envelopes our tape or whatever adhesive you want to use and our foam squares and I didn't even take a paper trimmer with me I did everything with my scissors okay so that's the lamps next up we have this beautiful little girl walking through her garden this is a square image. The image itself is about five by five. We have this wonderful little border piece. We've got wishing someone a very special and wonderful day. Wishing someone very special, wonderful day. A uh, special little girl. And this one says, hope your day blossoms with joy. We've got a couple of different little borders here. Here's our layering piece. Here's our cardstock. 
Now again, this one probably easily could have gotten three. In this case, I chose to make two. So if you wanted to make even more cards than I have made, just choose your largest pieces. I probably would choose this one, um, this one, and this one. And I'd start assigning my pieces based on size out to the three if I wanted to make three. Here's our finished cards for this set. This one's on a USA 2, four and a quarter by five and a half. But you can see we even though we're only making or we're making two cards instead of one, we still get really nice dimension. We have four layers on our little girl there. Here's our second card. This one's done on a five and a half, excuse me, yeah, five and a half by five and a half card, I think. And thank you for all that you do. All I've done is taken my blank card, covered it with background cardstock, and then I put my, my larger image up on some foam tape, foam taped up my my greeting, and I did use that little border at the very top because I just thought that looked pretty with the, with the colors. So, two there. I love the variety of images in this kit. In this one, we have an old fashioned kitchen, kind of a vintage kitchen, with a basket with puppies in front of the stove. Isn't that cute? Hope your day is filled with love and happiness. Two little borders. Remember, as we've talked before, save these trim off pieces until you're finished to make sure that you have plenty of, of trim work available because this here would be a beautiful border. You can make it whatever width you want, but that would be a nice border. Here's our layering pieces. Now here's an example of a cardstock sheet that does not have the image. So you can see why in this case I might prefer to make two, although there still would have been three images I could use if I had chosen to do that. Here's our finished cards. This one was fairly long, so I made this one on an A7 card, which is a 5 by 7 card. I used my little border strip up the side just because I thought that looked pretty over there. And this one, when I cut it out of here, I cut it out here. Then I put my other little border strip on this side, and I just thought that looked pretty with that. A lot of times you'll see that I'll take the join where they, where they join the paper pieces or where I've joined paper pieces, and I'll put a piece of the, the paper ribbon over the joint just to make it a little bit fancy there. And one other thing I wanted to point out here, this was the actual base layer they gave. And it doesn't have that wallpaper in the back. Instead, it had this window. Now, when I wanted to make my second card, this actually had part of that window coming up here. And I took my detail scissors and I clipped the window out. And then I used that heart, the little heart strings background, her, our background sheet. And I used that as wallpaper. And then I put my little my little greeting here on top of that so it would look like a plate on the on the wall or something there but I think it turned out beautiful. Um, it did look a little funny when it had part of a window there but I just made that window go away and I think it turned out beautiful. So here's our two finished cards from that kit. This next one up was an interesting one because it is a very, very busy pattern. It's fun and it's interesting. There is a lot going on in this one. We've got a bird and blooms up here in the upper part. We've got this cottage in the background. We've got a greenhouse. We've got more birds and bushes. We've got lots of garden here. Um, daffodils and hydra... Or, what are those called? Um, Oh, I don't remember your gal gun. Uh, they're like grape hyacinth. They're like hyacinth here. 
And we've got our little primroses and things here in the front. We've got a gardening basket. We've got birds. We've got butterflies. More birds here. We've got bunnies in the front. There's just a lot going on in that card. So obviously, I'm going to layer it up, but then I'm not going to add a lot of extra things to this one because that is a very, very busy pattern all on its own. Here's our layering pieces. Love the little bunnies. They're so cute. Little birds too, but the bunnies jump right out at me. I love those. This says, plant dreams, pull weeds, and grow a happy life. <laughs> it's a nice sentiment for every day. And here's our border sheet. I did use this as the base layer in one, and I used this as the base layer in the other, and I only made two of these cards. So here's what I ended up with. Here's my base layer piece. And because the design itself was already very busy, I put this on a 4x6 card, and in this case I didn't even cover this with cardstock. I just thought that little bit of a white frame around it tamed it down just a little bit, and I liked it just like that, so I used a 4x6 behind it, and then just let it go. The 4x6, it's approximately 4x6, it's actually a European A6, which is like 4 and a quarter by just less than 6, but it fit this image perfectly. And then I took my other piece, and you're, you may be wondering when you look at these images, where did I get that blue sky? Well, I, it, when I put it up against the green, it's like the image has kind of disappeared, and I wanted a little bit more contrast there. So what I did was I went ahead and finished my images. I covered my card with this. And I, as you know, I tape down my card to my backer sheet and I use the, the card to cut around, cut it out. And like I said, I had that green piece there and that green just wasn't doing anything for me. So what I did was I loosened my foam tabs here and I slid in a piece of blue cardstock, blue sky, behind there to give me the contrast that I wanted. So my other image is down underneath there, but I just added a piece of blue just because I thought that it was a nice contrast. And that allowed me to put my, my greeting up at the top, and I think it turned out really pretty. Now, you'll notice that there is not a piece of blue here, and I said I didn't use anything outside the kit. Nope, I stole the blue sky from the back of the lambs. <laughs> you'll see that we'll... We'll run across a piece where I actually whacked out a piece of blue and used it on my on this card. So those are the two that came from this set. Next up, I love this one. Like I said in this springtime set, they just have such an interesting array of images. Here's my base layer. We've got the old English countryside here, someone riding their horse across this arched bridge and one of those little transit boats coming down the channel. Very pretty. I love the plaid with that. And fortunately they gave us a nice piece of that plaid on our printed background sheet. So these are the two that I've used as my base layers, this one and this one. Here's all of our finishing pieces. There's quite a few pieces to this one. Once again, it probably could have been a three card kit if I had chosen to do that. I just opted for two this time. Here's my base layer on top of that plaid background. I didn't do anything particularly special with this one. I did find that I liked it better when I set my image a little bit to the, side, to the left and then I put my grading a little bit to the right. I just kind of liked not having everything centered. I thought that added an element of interest to my card. You'll note I'm not showing you the insides of these cards. That's because we're down to about 12 of the insert packs for this set. If you want one, get it quickly. 
because those are going to sell out. And I thought, why should I use one up in my demo when I'd rather make them available for you? So I did not put inserts in these cards, although there are a limited number of insert packs available. And here's my side piece. I've taken that directly from here, put it on a 4x8 card. I liked the sky all showing. This just was such a nice open outdoor scene that all I did was take a piece of my border, put it across here, and then I centered my especially for you to use up a little bit of that sky, but I love the way that turned out. I think that's very, very pretty. Done. This next one has a wonderful arched gateway and a, and a fence line. I thought that was really pretty. I don't see anything like that here. And pretty tulips, detailed tulips in the front. We've got congratulations, enjoy your special day, repeated down one border with love on your special day. Here's my border or my layering piece. You can see they're very, very large pieces in this one. In fact, this was one of the first cards I did, and that's when I decided I was going to go ahead and just make two cards in each design for this set. And this one does not have an image, a specific image on here. Obviously, it has the tulip borders, which are directional, by the way. So, um, once again, that kind of reinforced the decision to just make two cards out of this set. Let me show you the card that I created, and I want to keep this one handy because I did something different. One of these, I believe. Oh, I know what I did. So on this one, we've got this building in behind here, and that looks really pretty. But on this one, when I actually put this up on my card, this looked a little bit funny, kind of sticking up by itself. So I took my detail scissors and just cut it straight across here, and we'll see that. Here's my cards. Here's the base layer we just talked about with the building behind it. And here's the one that I took that building out of the background. Now what I also, what I could have done had I had more, you know, extra of the skyline, I could have left that partial building in here and put a little piece of sky behind here and it would have been fine. But I think it turned out just great anyway. Once again, you'll notice I'm kind of setting my card a little bit to the left and adding my label to the right just as an additional element of interest. But I love that card. I think it turned out really pretty. This time we have a really pretty bouquet of spring flowers. We've got the daffodils and the pansies and the other little flowers all in a bunch tied with ribbon. Wishing you a beautiful day and a couple nice borders. Note we have these wonderful corner pieces here. Let's see what we... Oh, and here's our layering sheet. You can see that hunky-dory die cutting. These just pop right out of the sheet so easily. Sometimes even before you want them to. Just like this one just did. <laughs> oh, well. I'll just keep the pieces together till I finish them up. And here's my other image. Of course, the two I'm going to use for my base layers are this one and this one. Let's see what we did with them. I'm going to show you one thing about this one. Sometimes it can be a little tricky to get these corners exactly where you want them. So what I do when I'm doing that is I'll go ahead and I'll build up my layers on here, but I kind of leave everything in, in place, or at least these four corners in place until I'm done. <laughs> this is so easy to do. I put a little tape here, 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 and here on the four corner pieces from the back. And then, and I also trimmed it out around here so I could see where my borders were going to be. And then I held that frame up to my card. I put the entire frame down and then I peeled my frame off so my corners were all positioned correctly. And then, actually before I peeled it off, I stuck my oval 
through the hole with foam tape on the back so everything would be positioned perfectly. But I used this little frame they popped out of as my template to get my spacing just right. And that was really, really easy to do then. And I knew I wanted a greeting on here, but it didn't look quite right below, and it didn't look quite right above, so I put it right across the middle, and I think that looked pretty. Here's my other one. In this case, I've taken this piece right here, and I end up with this really pretty accent piece here, and then we have this really nice um, especially for you with love, and I thought that looked beautiful there. I also, before I put that down, used one of my border strips to just go over the join, like I talked about a lot of times. I do that just to add an additional bit of elegance to where the two paper patterns are joined, but I thought that was really pretty. I love these cards. They're some of my favorites. I love this little kitten. Don't know how much you can see in camera, but we've got this pot of lavender here and it's got some little bees buzzing around it. That little kitten is getting his nose really close to one of those bees. But that's a beautiful little scene with the lattice work behind the kitten and all the flower pots around him. This one's wishing you a day as wonderful as you are. A couple of really nice floral borders on this one. And our sweet kitten. Here's my cardstock, so we have a really nice base layer to work from on the cardstock as well. One of the things I've mentioned before about Hunky Dory that I just love is that in these layering kits, they create the images just right to go right over the cardstock as well as the base layers. So I love that because that's what allows us to get multiple cards from a kit. So here's all of our layering pieces couple nice greetings on here to someone very special and sending you loving birthday wishes as well as all the sweet little flowers. Here's what we did with them. Here's my base layer. This is a 5 by 7 card. In order to put my little greeting at the bottom I found that a longer card was better so this is on a 5 by 7 and I've just fit my little sending loving birthday wishes across the bottom there and put a little for you with a kitten on foam tape. I thought that was especially pretty. Okay, here's where I've taken the and done the uh, the corner of that cardstock sheet. And it already had this writing down one side here. Here I just wasn't especially happy with the way my edge cut, so I used a little piece of my ribbon and slid it down right in behind my image to get a to get a nice little finishing edge on that side. And I thought it looked great when I was done. It looks like it belongs. And uh, even though this has a long sentiment on it, it fit just right when I said a blooming marvelous day with lots of love. It originally said wishing you a, but I just made it a a blooming marvelous day with lots of love. Why <laughs> didn't that turn out cute? If you're feeling like there's a lot of card sets in here, it's because there are. But do you know, I finished this entire set, all of these cards that you're seeing, in just two days. So I made 24 cards in two days and theoretically I could have finished the other 24 cards in just another day or so if I had duplicated these patterns. So really quick and easy set to do and they're so charming. Here's our little birds. I did exactly the same thing here. I, used, I cut this out around to give me a nice even border all the way around it so I could use that to eyeball and place my images right onto my card. I taped them from the back. Tape, 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 tape. I centered it over my covered card, laid it down, then I put my oval topper right into the center, peel this off, leaving my corners, and everything comes up beautifully balanced. So 
just a really neat little hint for getting those even without spending a lot of time making them even. Another choice you can do if you prefer is you can bring your, your um, corners out to the very corners of your card and then you can center your image in between. But I just liked these like this. So there's my birds. Here's my second set of birds. Uh, do I do want to tell you how I did this one. Here's my corner piece, which I used as my second layering base. I took this corner. This is a uh, this is an a, a European A6 card, a four by six, and that gave me a lot of just kind of plain lavender because it's kind of a short card. So what I did was I just trimmed off this border piece on the top. I brought it down, I glued it in place, and used a border piece between the two, and I think that's a beautifully balanced card then. And just to show you the final piece we haven't looked at yet, here's our layering elements. There are really quite a few birds on here, so this could have been three cards had I chosen to make it three. Here's some of my favorites for Easter cards. Look at that wonderful little bunny. And it says to some bunny special. So cute. And this one says Easter wishes just for you. You can probably hear Amy shaking her little ears there. Uh, Easter wishes just for you. Now she's going to try and get vocal now that she heard her name. She's down there grunting at me saying stop that love the dog. Okay, so there's my base piece. This again is one that does not have a layering sheet here. But they do give you a nice, very complete image here. And that's what I used for my second layering piece. Here's my cards. First up, here's the one that was done on the base sheet they gave me. Just use one of my corners diagonally there and covered my card and then put my base sheet right on top of it. You can see what I mean. These just don't need a lot of extra embellishment. Certainly I could have put a happy, a happy Easter greeting. I could have used ribbon and bows and glitter and other things. I just thought these cards were precious just like they were. Here's my other one. You can see you don't really lose anything in the translation of using that other large 3D image layered up. I did have quite a bit of opening left here at the top, but I used a 5x7 card on purpose so I could do, use that little fun somebody special on this card. And I found it easier to put that in and have it look balanced by using a 5x7 card. Here's another fun Eastery image, although it doesn't have to be Easter, but the little chicks hatching out of the eggs in a field of daisies. Oh my gosh, life doesn't get any cuter than that. This is wishing you a truly excellent day. And from me to you with love, and Easter wishes just for you are our greetings on this page. Here's our cardstock piece. You can see I actually borrowed a piece out of this one for my first set of two cards. The reason for that is that I opted to make a little bit more involved card. I had one of my center step cards with me and I just found that I had to make a center step card out of that because I just thought that was too cute not to. Have a cracking birthday it says up here. <laughs> From me to you with love down here. Isn't that cute? So I used double the borders. I swiped little pieces here and there to make this larger center step card. But isn't that just adorable? Here's my actual base piece that they gave me. I love the way the Easter egg looks cracked away in those layering images. Isn't that cute? That's adorable. Wishing you an excellent day. I actually because I was using a five by five and a half by five and a half card here, I actually slid that greeting down slightly over my base sheet and kind of put it behind the behind the little duckling's head. But I thought that turned out really cute. So I've shown you this. That's my 
corner treatment, my base sheet, and here's my layering pieces. Sending happy thoughts your way. Have a cracking birthday that we used. Again, these are very large images, so probably better for t uh, two cards than three, although you might be able to get three if you're really creative, which many of you are. Last set. I love this one. <laughs> I think I say that a lot. Bryce is over here shaking his head. Yes, you say that constantly. <clears throat> Whichever set I'm working on tends to be my favorite, but I really did have a good time making these. This one says, it's your special day. Relax and enjoy yourself. And it also says, wishing you... I think my light in here is reflecting the... Wishing you a blooming, marvelous day. My light's kind of bright in here. It's hard to read in the reflection. But I love that. Look at that chair. Doesn't that just look inviting? I want to go sit in that chair. Of course, as tall as I am, when I stood up, I would hit my head on that planter. It's, it's a foregone conclusion. It would happen. Here's my layering pieces. Here's my cardstock. Let's take a look at those finished cards. <clears throat> Here's the first one. Now look at how those chairs look when they're layered. I hope that comes through on camera because these chairs are just so wonderful when they're layered up in 3D images. It's just so realistic. My goodness, it's beautiful. I love that card too. That's pretty. This is on a USA 6, 5 by 6 and a half. Because I wasn't adding a greeting to the top, I didn't need to use an extra long one in this case. I did put a little button greeting on it that says Dear Friend here. Here's my second one. I've just taken that right from here. And you'll notice in this case I chose to whack off the flower basket. I wouldn't have had to do that. That just had really a lot of open space. And even when I put the greeting in, that was just too much open space. So I took the flower basket off and just made just made this one. But you can see, even though I'm making two cards out of a kit that was made for one, look at the dimension in those chairs. Those chairs turn out just beautifully. That's it. That is 24 cards out of 12 sets. So this has been the, the first signs of spring. This is actually the 2017 spring kit from Hunky Dory. Our 2018 spring kit will be showing up any day now, but we had quite a few of these left. For those of you lucky enough to get them, these are going to be offered at really special pricing in our newsletter and our store. So if you're a newsletter subscriber, I'll send you a link. If you're not, go to www.simplyspecialcrafts.com, scroll to the bottom of the page and you'll find a newsletter sign up there. Sign up for our newsletter so that you too can be notified of when we've posted new videos and when uh, and get a, a newsletter with all, a link to all the products used. This is the 24 cards I've just shown you. This kit has two of everything. So this kit could potentially make 48 cards and even more if you wanted to make three cards out of some of them. So. I hope you found this, use, this video useful. If you did, please like our videos and follow us on YouTube and sign up for our newsletter. I'm Debbie from Simply Special Crafts and we'll see you next time.